अल्लाहमानी बसमीम क्लास कैसे हैं आप लोग उम्मीद है कि यू आर विल बी फाइन अलहमदिल्लाज लेक्चर वी विल कंटिन्यू द रेडार टॉपिक टॉपिक एंड द रेडार वी हैव स्टडीड टिल द steel technology and in the steel technology i have def- i have described you how the steel technology works and what are the basic uh conditions and criteria in order or the uh, working parameters on which the steel technology depends there are four uh, criteria on which the steel technology depends that is what material shape active cancellation radar absorbent absorbent paint they all have been discussed in detail in the last le- video lecture to we'll just start from the summary of these that uh, in the material session we have discussed the steel technology should not use the metal as the metal is the strong reflective of the radar's frequency so the basic uh, phenomena of the steel technology is the build up of the steel plane it should not be a uh, metal it should not be of metal and uh, we have used mostly the plastic or Fiber glass in order to use the planes which should not be identified. The second phenomena is the shape directivity and orientation. Here we have studied that the signal should not be reflected in order to not identify the object and. for this reason we have to uh, look on into the shape of the uh, steel that it should not be the sharp images they should be uh, round surfaces by which we can minimize the reflection of the signal the third is the active cancellation in active cancellation we have studied that the target itself generate a signal which is equal in intensity but opposite in phase in order to cancel out the incident radar signal this create the destructive interference and the upcoming signal is cancelled in the atmosphere and the object not identified doesn't identify the fourth basic uh, object for steel technology is the radar absorbent paint it is a special paint that is designed in order to uh, reflect in order to minimize the reflection of the signal by using a technique that the paint should absorb the frequency of the radar signal and convert it convert it into heat rather than being reflected so that that special paint is used to absorb the energy and convert it into heat energy so these are the four methods these are the four parameters that should be taken in account to build up a steel plane which should, uh, which is uh, not identified as the object so these are the pictures of the steel now the next topic which we have to start today is the interference there are three type of interferences generally one is the noise second is the clutter and the third is the jamming noise is basically generated when the signal have interfered uh, when the signal is interfered 
with the some other signal or the atmospheric uh, atmospheric parameters enter into the signal then the product will be the noise then the second is the clutter clutter is basically a short uh, term of noise type thing which enters into the signal and cut off the uh, transmission for a time being and jamming is basically the interference which is uh, uh, which jams the signal that means which uh, which does not uh, tends to transmit the signal or stop the transmission of signal by destructive destructive interference as an, exa exa as, as an example we have seen previously that in the active cancellation we have used this jamming and how we use this jamming we we created the same signal with the radar frequency but opposite in phase which which create the destructive interference so these are the type of the interferences now the hazard uh, that should be precautionary uh, measures in order to uh, uh, in order to identify the object and to cancel the mishap in the identification number one is the C clutter C clutter echoes are caused by reflection of the radar pulses against the C waves the reflection is specular and conditions for the pulse to return to the scanner are favorable near the ship. At longer ranges, the beam will be deflected away from the ship. Marine radars are equipped with a rejection system to minimize the effect of sea clutter. This control is often named anti clutter C or STC. Here it is identified that what are the sea clutter? Sea clutters are basically the reflection of radar frequency uh, from the uh, sea waves and that reflection basically uh, misidentified or uh, seen in the scanner as the object and it should it should be uh, uh, ignored by a system and there are system exists in marine radars that reject this type of clutters and they are called anti clutter C or SGC next is the noise definition we all know the noise definitions that these are the random variations in the signal generated by electronic components and uh, in radar, they are um, imply as the superimposed on the upcoming eco signals. The lower the power of the desired signal, the more difficult it is to dis discern the discern it from the noise. That the, the it is seen that to cancel the noise effect, we have to. The power, the uh, the return equals should have the uh, more power, should have more uh, intensity in order to dis discern the uh, noise. Next, the noise figure is defined that it is a measure of noise produced by a receiver compared to an ident receivers. Noise is also generated by external sources, that is right. Most importantly, the natural thermal radiation of the background scene. There will be less also flicker noise due to electronic transit, but depending on 1 over F, will be much lower than thermal noise and the frequency is higher. It defines the flicker noise that is uh, uh, generated by the switching of the electronic devices, but it depends on the switching frequency and it, it it is always much lower than the thermal noise 
that is the PPI scope. That PPI scope. That PPI scope for this channel is the radar wing screen. Radar wing screen. Here the clutters are identified. This big ground is the ground clutters by the sea. These are the weather clutters that is clouds and something. And these are actually our targets that are identified. Radar jamming. Gen next is the jamming. Jamming refers to radio frequency signals originating from source outside the radar, transmitting the radar frequency and thereby masking targets of interest. Jamming may be intentionally intentional as with an electronic welfare tactic or unintentional as with friendly forces operating equipment that transmit using the same frequency range. Jamming is considered an active interference source and it is initiated by elements out of the radar and generated and in general unrelated to the radar signals. Where the jamming is defined. Jamming is referred to radio frequency signal originating from source outside the radar. How jamming phenomena occurs has been defined previously in the same lecture that the frequency, the upcoming frequency signal is being uh, uh, hit by the same intensity frequency signal with a difference in phase or the 180 degree phase shift when both the signals uh, interfere with each other the destructive interference occur and the jamming is produced that jamming can be done intentionally because in order to provide the friendly forces to operate equipment at the same frequency or it can be unintentional intentional or unintentional both have the reasons uh, so that is the jamming uh, issue or the, sorry, the jamming phenomena Next is the uh, next is the advantages of radar with respect to the military. The advantages are written in the in the same of points. One is first is the all weather day and night capability. Yes, definitely radar can be used monitor day and night weather multiple target handling and engagement capability yes definitely radar are primarily used to target the upcoming object and its capability then short and fast detection time between target detection and ready to fire movement definitely as fast as the target has been detected it is easy to uh, it is easy to handle uh, the fire movement as fast as possible. Next is easy to operate and hence low manning requirement and stress reduction under severe conditions. Yes, it is easy to operate definitely. And it is the first time, one time setup and it operates automatically by itself. Just need some of the troubleshooting and maintenance. Highly mobile system to be used in all kind of train. Definitely, we have given the first in the start of this topic. We have given the uh, diagram. Like uh, I'm going to, I'll show you the diagram. As I remember. Otherwise, no issue, but 
it can be highly uh, mobile as it works on the uh, it will, there are some radars which can be used as the mobile systems and be fit can be fitted on the uh, big big uh, vehicles or big uh, 16 wheeler or 18 wheeler vehicles in order to uh, uh, in order to pro profit the mobile radar systems next is the flexible weapon integration and unlimited number of single air defense weapons can be provided with target data yes definitely as the object can be identified or the enemy object is identified as, as fast as possible it's better it's it's uh, it's obviously it is very uh, if it's for it if it identified the object fast we can react to the enemy as fast as possible in order to retaliate at a distance and we can definitely do this with multiple number of targets targets and it can easily be done using the radar now there are also some disadvantages of this system as Time radar can take up to 2 seconds to lock on. Radar has wide beam spread. Cannot track if the acceleration. Deceleration is greater than 1 mile per hour per second. Large targets close to radar can saturate receiver. <coughs> Sorry. Handheld modulation can falsify readings. So there are advantages and disadvantages of all of the technologies but the advantages uh, are not as high as the uh, no, so, sorry the disadvantages are not as high as the advantages we also have to look into that the number one disadvantage that has been described here is the time radar is the time issue the radar can take up to two seconds to lock on that means it is the general radar timing that it can take up to 2 seconds to lock the uh, object that can be useful sometime or that can be useless sometime second is the radar has wide beam spread 50 feet diameter over 200 feet range that means radar as a wide beam it does not have the narrow beam so it is it takes more time to identify the object that is a, another disadvantage next is the it cannot track if deceleration is greater than one mile per hour per second that means the radar cannot track the object as if its acceleration is more than one mile per hour per second because the lock time is two second it cannot track this fast object next is the large targets close to radar can saturate receiver that means the target has a large size the radar can be saturated or the receiver can be confused in order to identify the object and that is the main disadvantage if the target is near and the target is big the receiver can be confused by identifying the object last disadvantage that has been shown here is the handheld modulation can falsify readings yes definitely handheld modulation is a modulation which can be adjusted through manually so manual modulation 
can falsify the data readings but as i have i have previously as i previously uh, told you that the maintenance and the troubleshooting is the is is on regular basis is necessary for the um, for the identification or the working of the radar if the maintenance uh, or the uh, troubleshooting is not on regular basis the radar will not work efficiently and one of the uh, one of the uh, condition is the handheld modulation which can falsify the readings now the applications are defined here in form of the diagram so here are the applications this application defines the identification not identification of the object information system or can be an airport this defines the weather monitoring this defines the object identification so there are different applications for different uh, fields of application can be military remote sensing air traffic control law enforcement and highway security aircraft safety and navigation ship safety space or any other miscellaneous applications in military important part of air defense system operation offensive missile and other weapons target detection target tracking and weapon control Track the targets, direct the weapon to intercept and assess the effectiveness of the engagement. Used in area, ground and air surveillance. Can also be used as remote sensing, weather observation, TV reporting, planetary observation, low ground probing, mapping of sea ice. These are the pictures also given here. That is satellite system. And that is the observation of planetary or identification of some side of the Earth. In air traffic control, it can also be used to safely control air traffic in the vicinity of the airports. Ground vehicular traffic and aircraft taxing, mapping of region of rain in the vicinity of airports and weather, ship safety. Radar is found on ships and boats for collusion avoidance and to observe navigation wars when the visibility is poor. Shore based radars are used for surveillance of harbors and river traffic. The conclusion is that the radar can be used to find velocity, range, and position of the object. LIDR is an advanced type of radar which uses visible light from laser. Technology will continue to grow and radar will advance with it. The growth of radar technologies will be combined by a wide variety of applications. Radar in the future will most likely to be as common as cell phone applications or other. So that's all for the radar. Inshallah we'll discuss this on Zoom session. Other than the Zoom session, if any query you want to ask before, you can you can contact me and ask if there are any uh, query regarding the lecture.
thank you very much and be safe inshallah we'll we'll be meet, we'll be meet soon thank you very much